My name is Slash Gallagher. It is a time of revolution. Come and join me in my cause. The California Corporation took Los Angeles away from us. Now I'm here to take it back. It is a time to choose sides. This is better work. Relax. I'm a genius. A rookie sent to stop him. How do you like your first day on the job, Dakota? Asking for a war, Mr. President. All Slash Gallagher wants is power. Isn't that what this council exists for, power? We built the buying We feed the people. We control the crime. I send you out to stop him. And you said he's invincible, sir. I saw Gallagher walk through flame and gunfire like it was nothing. He killed half my men. A few must die for the greater good. That is the way of revolution. But revolutions are not fueled by ideals alone. Open the vaults. A direct assault, sir. There's hostages in there. We get Gallagher any way we can. Haven't you learned by now that every time we play this game, you lose? Better luck next time, buddy. But next time, he'll need more than luck. He will need time and the technology to transform himself into what the enemy has become. Dakota! Hologram Man. Welcome to They Call Us a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other podcast services by searching They Call Us a Movie. We are part of the Main Damie Network, and to find more from us, check out the website at themaindamie.com or on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at themaindamie. We're also now a proud member of Geek Vibes Nation. You can find them at gvnation.com. Welcome back to They Call Us a Movie. This is Anthony Delvecchi, and with me as always is Dan Aquino and Mark Myers. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, everyone. Okay, guys, now hear me out. I think this movie was ahead of its time. Because I think every movie should start with a two-minute trailer of the movie you're about to see. I was, I was so confused when I started watching this. <laughs> That's where movies should go. I yes. thought I thought I clicked on the trailer. I was like, oh, it's going to ruin the movie for me. I, just, I did the same thing. I was like, wait, I didn't see a trailer option. <laughs> I, I do think that would be so badass if, if movies <laughs> did that from now on, though. That'd be so cool. Action, like the next yeah. Mission Impossible, starts with just like a banger of a uh, of a the trailer. trailer. You know, Mission, Tom Impossible. Right. <laughs> Mission Impossible Nine coming right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you just see like uh, Tom Cruise just jump from space, and that's the trailer. <laughs> he, and he falls into Mission Impossible Nine. That's like that's the that's the whole trailer. It explodes. Mission mm-hmm. Impossible. Mine. But Mark, uh, I agree. Yes, uh, we we're all in agreement this time. Um, uh, before we get into it, this this week's movie, which was my choice, um, what have you guys been watching to keeping yourself occupied during this oh. unprecedented times? I'm glad you asked, because I watched two top-notch movies, and one one of them is actually I enjoyed. The other, I can't believe it should be on this podcast. The first one was True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger, oh, yeah. one of my top five Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Uh, and the second movie I watched was Resident Evil Revelations, and that is not one of my top five Resident. I don't even, I don't know if anyone has a top five Resident Evil. <laughs> right? I don't know. I bet you there's somebody. There's somebody that's a a uh, Resident Evil stan. Yeah. Oh, those movies are so bad. Yeah. Now, so which bad. one was this? in the oh i don't know it was uh 
Jeez, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so terrible. I only uh, know one and two in terms of what I can tell you happens, and no, like one is when it they the underground hive, you know, lab the first well, one where they all and then have the second the one has nemesis. Who knows? You know, yeah, they, they all have the hives. This is just yeah. really it, this one was in three D. Oh, so yeah. it's more recent. Yeah. Yeah, this was the like when everyone was trying to get into the 3D shtick. Got it. So guys are throwing like, you know, the gun, okay, Claire, catch this, and the gun comes at you in slow mo, and you just die a little inside. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that's it for me. <laughs> I ended on a very positive note there. All right. Uh, what about you, Mark? Um, not much outside of you know the documentary series I've been watching. You know, Last Dance. Um, the, like I said, the, the more and more I watch it, the more I think I get sort of respect for Jordan because he's being the asshole that we all know he is in this. And, um, especially when he rolled his eyes at Isaiah Thomas, um, multiple times in this, um, thing. But, um, the, the one downside is I, or maybe it's not really a downside. Um, I hope that one day I get famous enough that I can make a 10 part documentary series where I just shit on all the people I don't like, because it's essentially what Jordan's doing in this. I don't like the general manager. We'll shit on him for an episode. You know, I didn't really like what Scotty did. We'll shit on him for half an episode. I don't like Isaiah Thomas. We'll do it for two episodes on Isaiah. <laughs> you know, like I mean, you, you could do that now if you want. Yeah, That's what YouTube's for, man. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Sit there and just shit on people. But, um, when I found out, I think it was yesterday, I found out that his production company is like sort of involved with it. Jordan's. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, so we're not going to find out the nitty gritty shitty stuff. Right. But, um, uh, but anyway, so I've been watching that. It's just, it's just fascinating, um, to see like the things that now I know that he's backing it, the things that still get through where I'm like, Michael, you might've had editorial control over this. <laughs> you know, you might right. not want to. Have it out there, you punch the teammate in the face. Um, <laughs> but then again, everybody would want to punch Will Purdue in the face. Have you seen that <laughs> man's face? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I watched that and then, you know, just miscellaneous YouTube stuff in the background, video game wise, while I'm doing other stuff, um, watching D&D stuff. I mainly watch that stuff just so I can stay inspired and stuff for Stranger Damies, sure. you know, see if I can pick up something here and there to sort of sprinkle in um and you know that that's mainly my thing like, you guys go to movies i go and just watch random D D things um just to see what other people are doing and those tend to be the length of movies sometimes sure. uh, so you know you ask me every week like what do you watch i'm like oh, i don't really watch anything traditional movie wise um i did uh watch an inning of korean baseball before i had to go to sleep um on espn you're itching uh, that much, huh? <laughs> uh, I just, I just want to see. Let, let me see what this is. And with no fans there, it's like not, it's, it's not worth it. Um, to get up at four thirty in the morning. You got up uh, at four. You were such no, 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 no. Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no reason to get up that no, early. Whoa, 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 whoa. You stayed up till four thirty in the morning. <laughs> no, the, the one, the first night, the opening day was like one a.m. I think was the game. But every game from here on out is going to be 4 or 5.30 in the morning. No, oh, don't do it, dude. I'm not Please doing don't. it. All right. But totally. last night I was like, I was like, oh, it's 1 it's one a.m. You know, I can say, and I watched an inning. It was like, this isn't worth staying up any longer for. Yeah. You know, oh, but, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, man, it, It's Mark, one of those curiosity been... things. Uh, I don't miss sports that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway, uh, that's that's my boring life that I've been watching so okay. uh i really haven't been watching that much of any interest um i've been trying to stay occupied other than watching stuff but i have been starting to i get i kind of watched one and then i started just watching the others and i now find myself in a marvel kind of binge so i watched iron man and then i was like well you know thor's right here on amazon prime might as well watch that and I finished that, and I was like, well, it's suggesting Captain America, the first Avenger, so, you know, I got nothing to do for an hour and 40 minutes, so might as well watch that, and, you know, luckily the, uh, luckily Hulk is nowhere to be found, but, uh, <laughs> interesting, I guess because it's not, 
it wasn't uni- uh, universal owns it yeah. owns the the releasing rights to that but yeah so that's what i've, I've been re- watching besides again still keeping up with the friday the 13th series this week was number five so ne- this coming week is number six and i guess that wraps up kind of what we've watched this week except for the movie that we watched for this particular episode it was my week to pick a movie and I spent way too much time trying to figure out which movie we're going to do this week. But I found one eventually. Um, I originally wanted to do Lawnmower Man. Um, but I found out that movie's two and a half hours long. So that was like, yeah. nope. So I decided on a movie with a similar titled Hologram Man from 1995. I've never heard of this movie before. But I watched the trailer and I was like, all right, that's the one movie we're doing. Oh, it makes sense now why we had to watch this movie. Yes. <laughs> and this movie was amazing. Yep. Uh, the 90s. Yeah. Uh, guys, where are you coming from with, with Hologram Man? Well, I immediately thought of um, Lawnmower Man. As soon as I heard Hologram Man, I was like, did he mean Lawnmower Man? <laughs> and I was kind of excited to see that because I'd never seen it. But this movie kicks all types of ass. I love it. This is right up our alley. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just the right amount of bad where... You know, you have to review it, but it's not a slog, and you don't hate yourself after you watch it. Nope. Uh, there's questionable hair choices in this movie. <laughs> Several, yes. <laughs> uh, questionable questionable names, but some awesome names as well. So this is really, this is like a grab bag of just like awesome, terrible. So it, there's a lot of peaks and valleys. I was very happy with it. Yeah, no, it was it was as good as I was hoping. Um, and when you see when you watch the trailer and then you look up the, the letterbox reviews and you see that the the villain's name is Slash Gallagher, you know you're in for something good. Oh yeah. Um, uh, for anybody that uh, you know, as most people will probably never heard of this movie, Hologram Man from 1995 was directed by Richard Pepin. Uh, has directed a handful of movies, nothing that you would have ever heard of, but what one of his most important things was he was the co-founder of PM Entertainment Group. It was a uh, production company that produced hundreds of direct-to-video action movies from the early 90s, including a movie that we covered once before, The Killing Zone, starring Daron, Darren McBee, a.k.a. Malibu from American Gladiators, which is another favorite of ours uh, here on the show. Uh, the star is Joe Lara as Dakota, our hero. Evan Lurie, who is the villain of the, the movie, Slash Gallagher, also wrote it, co-wrote it. Uh, we also get Michael Norrie, John Amos, William Sanderson, Arabella Holzberg, Annalisa Scott, Tommy Tiny Lister Jr., and uh, Nicholas Wirth. And it has an IMDb score of 4.1 and a Rotten Tomato score, no critics, but a 30% audience score, and obviously no box office because it went straight to video um yeah yeah this yeah. this movie um immediately when you sent me the poster i was like okay this is either going to be really good in that bad terrible 90s action movie way yep or it's just going to be boring with a lot of like bad cgi attempts and terrible like stilted dialogue and um i felt like it thread the needle pretty well in that it did have the terrible visuals and stuff but there was enough there that was like, yeah, if I saw this on TV on like basic cable, it, you know, I would leave it on for at least 20, 30 minutes, you know. But, mm-hmm. you know, it was just it was exactly when I think of people ripping off Demolition Man and trying to put a twist on it. This is the exact type of movie that sure. I, I think of. Yeah, uh, it, it completely rips off Demolition Man, which is kind of ironic seeing as how Sylvester Stallone just came out uh, on social media a couple days ago and mentioned that they are ramping up to try and do a sequel to Demolition Man. We picked this movie well before that, a couple days yeah. before that. Um, so once again, we are responsible for something that's coming out. Uh, you're welcome, the America. He-Man, right? Yeah. <laughs> Masters of the Universe was another one. Um, I think oh, there's yeah. a couple other ones there, too. Yeah, yeah. We willed a lot of things into existence. Wow. We're, and, the, and the funny other connection from um, Demolition Man is that I think one of the females leads in this, um, either the partner or the girlfriend, was like just a, a nondescript officer. Like she's in the credits for Demolition Man. Okay. You yeah. know, which is, I, when I was looking through the, you know, IMDb um, just to see, I was like, oh, are these, like, are these two women like sort of like those 90s action that they're in all these direct-to-video 
mm. you know, movies because they looked like they would fit the part of that. And yeah. then I saw one was just listed as officer in Demolition Man. Gotcha. So. We're coming up on being the Simpsons of podcasts where we just predict movies that are going to be coming out in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if for nothing else, you should just tune in just to see what we predict. And you can go back to later episodes. Like, holy shit, they said that this was going to happen. And it happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, this, not only Demolition Man, but like Virtuosity and probably The Lawnmower Man too. other movies. This movie lifts from everything. They even meant, they even name drop Demolition Man in this movie. Yeah, play uh, Demolition Man. <laughs> uh, they also, yeah, they also, <laughs> it's, it's so fun. I love that uh, Tiny Li- T- Tiny Lister, who this is the third time on the on the podcast we're covering a Tiny Lister movie. Um, in the credits, he's listed as Tiny Zeus Tiny Zeus Lister Jr. Yeah. Um, as if like his as Tiny Zeus Lister Senior exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I love that he still kept Zeus in his title. Yeah. This you is know, well but... after. This is well after. Uh, yeah, it's like seven years. No holds least. barred. Yeah. 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 I also like our villain in this movie has a combination. I don't think I've ever seen this in a movie where he has a combination of awesome name and really boring name. Slash, awesome, and then Gallagher. That's such a terrible last name. Why would you keep the Gallagher? I don't know. I think Slash Gallagher sounds good. Like Gallagher is kind of, it's generic enough, but like together, Slash Gallagher sounds like pretty villainy. It, to me, it's uh, immediately I think of the comedian Gallagher. Sure. So I don't equate Slash Gallagher together. You know what I mean? Like Slash is a badass guitarist, <laughs> who, like he, heavy metal, and then Gallagher, this mustachioed uh, comedian who his whole thing was hitting watermelons. So yeah. to me, it just sounds like a weird. Well, he also has a weird first name, right? Norman. Norman. Norman or, Gallagher. So I, I wonder if that's the, his whole shtick is just it's a real nerdy name. Yeah. Norman Gallagher. Yeah. And he took away Norman to keep Slash, but kept yeah, the Gallagher. I, th- I think you're completely right in your thought process, Dan, that by keeping the Gallagher, it keeps the villainous thought in your head as with Gallagher the comedian. No, because, are, I mean, he was still relevant early, in the early 90s, wasn't are, he? Are we talking Gallagher 1 or Gallagher 2? Gallagher 2, definitely. <laughs> explain what is this gallagher oh gallagher so two. oh you don't know gallagher too so gallagher no. two was gallagher's brother and he basically sold him the entire concept of gallagher the the act to him and yeah. he went on the road did comedy shows as gallagher too i yeah. did not know that yep <laughs> he like Why? gave him the he gave him the the okay to go around as gallagher too so it was almost like a tribute act uh, it was just like, oh well, we missed out on Gallagher, so I guess Gallagher too is gonna do basically the same the same stand up, but you know he's just gonna hit watermelons too. Oh man, that's <laughs> yeah. So somebody's that's gotta get out. Sad. To, yeah, somebody's gotta get out to Topeka, Kansas, do the Gallagher act. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's like it's like the lamest version of nepotism ever, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. What a what a strange person to to carry on their legacy. <laughs> It's sort of like, well, I can't, I can't stop you from doing the same exact act, but just call yourself something slightly different. <laughs> or is that that's the meme where can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just change it around a little bit so it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't look like we cheated. <laughs> just exactly. Two on it. <laughs> Gallagher two, yeah. Um, the yeah, so the villain in this, is who the guy who plays Slash Gallagher, is also the writer, which is interesting. Evan Lurie was also in. Um, uh, double impact double impact yeah. he was one of the bouncers in the club the jean-claude van damme movie um that we covered a couple weeks ago he also did some stunt choreography for that movie as well so he was like a legit guy i guess uh but one of the trivia things in the in the uh, on imdb is evan lurie was on so much anabolic steroids that he uh, he was prone to roid rage on set some shots have been left in the original cut due to budget constraints <laughs> <laughs> So you got a guy that is just roid raging all over the place during this production. But now this is, I wish we had looked this up earlier so we could have played the game. Where is he roid raging? (laughs) Because there's a few that, a few scenes that do come to mind, but now you don't know. It could be the character or it could be Evan Laurie just going completely psycho on his uh, co-stars. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it, this is a fun one. This is as just as fun as the Killing Zone um, and Time. You know, all the ones that we we've kind of gravitated towards. I think Mission of Justice, the one that just Dan and I covered. Yeah. That one, they, that one was fun. Yeah, this yeah. is. Go ahead. It, yeah, go it ahead. was just shootout after shootout. Yeah. Which was amazing. <laughs> Lots of expl- explosions everywhere. Everything everything was set to explode, even my, cars for no reason. <laughs> my favorite part is they had at least I think it's four or five shootouts, right? Yeah. Uh, and then there's a moment in the movie where uh, Dakota says before the simulation, "Well, I got to learn how to be accurate because bullets are expensive nowadays." <laughs> <laughs> right. They also they have this like experimental bullet that they show twice and really. <laughs> Other than the very first scene of this movie, doesn't come into play for the rest of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's, like it's a, a laser, laser bullet. bullet. Yeah, it's a laser bullet. <laughs> it's awesome in the beginning when John Amos is blowing shit up, yeah. but l- later in the movie they do it again and it's completely useless. So they yeah. just kind of drop it after that. <laughs> I love how many people get thrown from explosions in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. everybody's just on wires in this movie, just re- and, ready. And super far away from the actual explosion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like a yeah. hundred yards away from the explosion. Look, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And I like how the one partner, his partner tried to land on the car hood when she got blown away. <laughs> Yeah. Her her only purpose in this movie is to die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> it begins. Now, yeah, I don't get into it in the plot. It's only the beginning. But I want to ask you guys, I was trying to think of a timeline question here. Um, him and John Amos at the beginning, Dakota. Mm-hmm. Is that all one day that they're together? Uh, it could be two days. Um, but no, no, it's one day. He's a rookie. He's a beginning. he's a rookie. They they stop they arrest the guy who says yeah. that Slash is going to yeah um you know has a hit on the governor basically that yeah. day. Okay, yeah, because my only thing is is I think at some point they say in the movie like oh it must have hurt you badly your partner dying and it was like weren't didn't they just know each other for like one day? <laughs> like well, it's <laughs> another human being dying I guess. <laughs> no, but I'm saying it's like if they made a comparison to the other person that's been his partner for like six years. Right. The, sure. You know, and it's like. Ah. So I I understand your que- your original question. Yeah. You're asking if that's the first day he was paired with yeah. John Amos. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe he was movie... a mentor or something. I don't know, yeah. but it was just funny that I was like, I think they were only together one day, and they're like comparing the death of this years long partner uh-huh. to this guy that he was in one shootout with. Yeah. You know, when you're in a shootout with someone, when the shit hits the fan, you get to know someone pretty yeah. quickly, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> From our you have a special bond. The shit. <laughs> <laughs> this movie makes two glaring errors, and it's both underutilizing characters. One is John Amos. Yep. He's the best From, actor in the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's in it for all of five minutes. Yeah. But he was from Die Hard 2. He's the general and misusing uh, Tiny Lister as yep. the henchman who really only has one line and he's bill he's top build in this movie yeah, he is. <laughs> he's like yeah. the second name on on the box and At he only has the, one line yeah that's why when john amos first popped up i was like is that jo-? no that's not time to then why was john amos listed so far behind um yeah. like when they were first zooming in on the two of them before you know, you see John Amos's face. Yeah. I was like, John Amos, is this going to be a good guy? <laughs> That'd be weird. But John Amos yeah. has like an end credit, so he yeah. he would, comes at the end. But um, I don't know if the, this poster could have came out several years later, so Tiny Lister became, okay. you know, who you know might have been after Friday, so they kind of just swapped them around. They do that all the time, where like people make it big and they like swap around names at like movies that never got released. Well, it, it sucks because they have there is a henchman like Slash Gallagher has a henchman who his only defining characteristic is he has an eye patch. Mm-hmm. He's like a pirate, I guess, or a tech pirate. I don't know. But they have him and he sucks as yeah. a henchman, as like the right hand man. You have like a seven foot tall, tiny lister looking all badass with tattoos on him. And you don't give him the right hand man duties. And that's a huge waste. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. You guys want to get into the plot? Seems like we're already uh, heading in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh. Dan, you want to plug? 
Of course, uh, as I've been doing for the past few weeks, I wanted to give a shout out to our friend Tia, who is on Geek Vibes Nation, very good friend of the podcast, and she has her own podcast, and it is called The Top Ten with Tia. It's a weekly podcast where Tia and her crew tackle a number of entertaining topics, like the top ten movies of the year, or the top ten worst on-screen couples. This podcast has it all, so don't miss out. All right. Yeah, so we're going to take a step back and listen to some more messages from friends of the podcast. So we will be right back. Hey, everyone, this is Steve. And this is Adam. And we're part of the Hop Nation USA podcast. Pittsburgh's number three craft beer podcast. Join us every Friday for new beer reviews. We'll talk about the news, history, and homebrewing. Plus, we'll sit down with the best brewers and industry personalities that'll have us. So whether you're a casual drinker, a hazy boy hophead, or even if you're a whale hunting cellar hoarder, just search Hop Nation USA on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher and join the nation. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. It's me, George, from the best little horror house in Philly, the show where we talk about the best horror movie ever made, according to our guest at least. We've talked about groundbreaking classics like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Alien, but we've also got a lot of great ones coming up, including some very fun guests like Len Kabazinski of Swamp Zombies and Red Letter Media fame, Caroline Williams, the star of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and Chase Williamson from John Dies at the End. So make sure you're subscribe to the best little horror house in philly and i'll see you boils and ghouls over there and welcome back and it's time to get into the plot for hologram man we start first of all we start with the amazon prime movie version of this uh, giving us a three minute trailer (laughs) as we mentioned earlier uh which was nice to have a little recap of what we were about to see before we saw it and then we have two and a half minutes of credits against black so (laughs) Start this movie up, go make yourself a sandwich and come back and you won't miss a damn thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I wonder if the movie is giving you that chance to turn back. Like, all right, we showed you the trailer. You in or you out? You have two minutes to decide. Uh, what's, what's the official runtime of this movie? An hour and 41 minutes. So it's not like they were like struggling to get to an hour and a half or an hour and 20 to make it an official feature length. So I don't know. But I guess they just probably didn't have enough money to put anything over <laughs> put the credits over anything they ran why out of their just, stock footage budget why not just keep it at 136 135 runtime what's the yeah. difference right yeah I don't know. um so we fade in having missed some great action apparently as cars are overturned and things are on fire and guys are shooting at everybody there's a firefight between some thugs with enormous gun and, and the police uh we meet Our hero, Dakota, who's a ponytailed rookie cop who only says shit, and then his partner is John Amos. Dakota kind of looking like a a slightly buffer um, Jared Leto. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) God, it was bothering me. I knew there was a comparison. This is bad hair number one for the movie, by the way. I mean, like, he's probably got, like, it's, it's out of style at this point in the 2020s but it's kind of like if you probably take it out of the ponytail he's probably got some luxurious locks well we do see we do those see luxurious it. locks it's enviable hair like got nice body and bounce to it <laughs> it's got volume <laughs> yeah nice volume to it so yeah. i mean but yeah it is a, it's still a ponytail and ponytails should be uh criticized whenever possible yeah, exactly. Yep. As well uh, as the other hairstyle, more so. <laughs> oh, absolutely. For we'll being there. problematic. <laughs> <laughs> right in all, yeah. And across all decades, it's problematic. Yes. Yeah. And we get John Amos, uh, the, uh, as me- D- Dan mentioned, Die Hard 2, as well as Good Times, obviously. Um, he goes against regulations in order to use laser bullets because all cops are <laughs> bastards. ACAB. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just starts blowing shit up and then a car seemingly out of mad max comes in and runs into other cars and those other cars just blow up for no reason mm-hmm. uh, and then john namos blows that car up with laser rounds um they pull the driver out of the wreck and the driver says slash is going to attack the governor that day amos gave gives no fucks he's ready to let that guy die but um Dakota is the rookie cop that is doing things by the book, so he saves the guy's life. And then we get the quickest and most out-of-context sex scene in the history of cinema. 
yeah. Which is I didn't how know what I was watching. Which is how we're introduced to our villain, Slash Gallagher, but we do not see his face. The sex scene literally takes all of about two and a half seconds. Um, <laughs> it looks like I did, boring sex, too. So I did some investigation um, with uh, incognito mode. And there does there does exist a longer version of said sex scene if you know where to find. It. Well, why did we it, waste it, that on two minutes of black and three minutes of a trailer? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, maybe it's, may, that, I don't know. That that longer scene exists in the writer's personal mu- library. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't know I don't know why there's a a slightly edited version on Amazon Prime. I you know. But I don't I don't know what version that that other part exists. But it does. I, I love on IMDb it says it has like sex and it says moderate and <laughs> then the list the listing is oh there's a sex scene breasts are shown quickly but that's about it. Yeah. You know it, it's yeah. hardly enough to count it as sex to be honest. Yeah. But uh-huh. you did have a good reason. See when after sometimes to peel the layers back of this podcast while we watch it you know sometimes we'll text each other and. You know, we'll kind of workshop some jokes, blah, blah, blah. So I messaged the group saying that was the most pointless sex scene in the history of of film. Mm -hmm. And Anthony responded, well, he did write the movie. So (laughs) I think I think he just wanted to show everyone that his character fucks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, But yeah, there there is a a sex scene that's a little bit longer that makes more sense. But still. Um, So uh after our dreadlocked villain slash gets a call from a guy with an eye patch, and then he tells him that they're ready, basically. So he gets off the phone and he says, "My public awaits," <laughs> and he leaves. So John, Amos, and Dakota meet the governor at the airport, and they're going to be his uh, security detail because they found out that Slash is going to do something. Uh, they give him a police escort as they ride with him in the limo. And meanwhile, Slash has apprehended a city bus. Which honestly, you would think he would have procured a vehicle prior to all this, but he obviously <laughs> hasn't because there are still passengers on the bus. <laughs> that might be my favorite part of this scene. Yeah. Oh, actually, I forgot about that. It just cuts right to him stealing the bus. Yeah. Right? He's already got. He's already got the bus. Right. He's <laughs> yeah. he's, he's driving already. There's no lead into him stealing it. He doesn't kill anyone that we see. It's, nope. For all we know, he he just kind of was walking by and there was a bus just hanging out. Yeah, no, like I'll I wonder if that was this. always the plan. It's like I'll just wait at the bus for like <laughs> it'll be, be there in like ten minutes minute maximum. Jump on, kill the driver because he does kill the driver. We do see the the body, um, and then I'll just I'll just hope that bus isn't late. I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so the motorcade while it's going gets stopped by a homeless man walking in the middle of the street. But surprise, it's actually the guy with the eye patch who pulls a gun out. And Slash runs over police cruisers with the bus, and then some goons of his drive into some cars with a big rig truck. The whole blocking of the scene confused the shit out of me, because the eye patch guy pulls a gun on the limo, and then the bus immediately drives into his his shot. Like, he's about to shoot the limo driver, but then the bus just comes in and hits the cars. So I was confused. Yeah, but. it's a, probably a bad plan. You know, a man <laughs> named Slash Gallagher, you know? Sure. Yeah, I guess I guess he's not exactly a mastermind. Um, but so after they kill the the driver of the limo, Dakota jumps into the driver's seat of the limo and tries to make an escape while Slash is on his tail with the bus. They go over, they go over an underpass that takes off the top of the bus, so now it's like a convertible bus. And then somehow and for some reason, Dakota decides to drive on the wrong side of the highway, which is incredibly dangerous for for a by the books cop. Um, and then while he's driving, Dakota also manages to shoot Slash's girlfriend, which I think is the same woman from the sex scene. We have no idea. Um, and police road block gets set up. Slash bumps the limo and it explodes and flips for some reason. Then the bus also crashes and comes to a stop. And then Slash has his no moment, then kills a bunch of cops. You know, when he screams, he goes to check on his dead girlfriend. He screams, no! So he has a little emotional scene there. Um... Dakota pulls John Amos out of the limo and Slash takes the governor as a hostage. Then Slash shoots Amos and then he kills the governor. Then Slash then decides to play a Russian roulette with Amos and Dakota, but then immediately decides that he doesn't want to. And then that, <laughs> but he then tells them that they have to. Yeah. <laughs> that might have been one of the roid raging scenes. Yeah. I don't want to play this game anymore. Okay. You're gonna play. You wanted to play at first. <laughs> it's like a child. I don't want to yeah. play Russian roulette. 
Oh, are you sure? No, I don't want to play. Oh, yeah. Okay. Be- before he backed out of it, I was like, oh, hell yeah, that's a great strategy as a as a villain that just showed it you're fucking nuts. Right. Like, yeah, I got three he's, bullets. We're going to play a game. Me first. He's willing to die. Like, I don't give yeah. a shit, man. I have dreadlocks for hair. Oh, yeah. We should have, at this point, mention that his dreadlocks are shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know how long this takes? <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be his real hair, right? I'd hope so. Yeah. Like, because that's a weird choice to I, decide I, I on. I would put more of a vote on Dakota having a wig than okay. Slash is being yeah. a wig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so while they're playing Russian roulette, John Amos goes for Slash and he gets shot. Then Dakota manages to fight Slash and wrestles the gun away. Then the cops show up and take Slash under arrest while John Amos dies. Then Slash gets sentenced for a number of crimes, including the murder of the governor, and he gets sentenced to hologram prison. And then we have kind of a flash forward five years later into the future. LA is in a biodome now because uh, all the popu- uh, all the pollution uh, voting is outlawed, citywide curfews are enacted, and meanwhile, Slash is up for reevaluation. And Dakota plans to go to the reevaluation hearing. Cal this is Corp- one of the ways. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. This no, is ahead. one of the instances where they rip directly from Demolition Man mm-hmm. when right. they have the parole hearing, and the computer says, "Oh, this subject six six four seven whatever has been taught to you know like knit or whatever." That's d- ripped directly from Demolition Man, right? They're, they're reprogrammed for some like menial task yeah, that's right. to help them, I guess, just not be a criminal anymore. I don't know, but yeah, one yeah. of them is reprogrammed to knit, I think. Yeah, I, w- I, w- I hope that the actor that is the first prisoner they evaluate was like a student actor because <laughs> that 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 had like college student actor written all over it. <laughs> Coming from a college student actor. Yes, coming coming from an actual actor. <laughs> who, Takes one to know one, right? Who, who, who was once in Gone with the Wind. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, cutting, I'm cutting that reference out. Okay. <laughs> um, so Calcorp Prison. Uh, it is a uh, it is a prison that is run by the Cal Corporation, who basically runs everything in L.A. now. Dakota's girlfriend is a tech at Calcorp Prison, as is her dad. And then uh, we see another prison guard get we see another prisoner get paroled, and it sort of just kind of shows us the way the process is supposed to go. And then one of the other techs at the prison we find out is working with Slash's goons back at his hideout, and he his plan is to hack the security matrix, which he is able to do. And Tiny Lister shows up, and he says his one line, and then that's about it. Um, Dakota drives to Slash Gallagher's hearing and calls his partner on his car phone. Uh, his stupid car as he's driving. Um, and we meet his partner just so she can be a casualty later. And then <laughs> he gets a call from some officers in need of assistance at the boating yard. So he uh, hightails it over to the boating yard. The boating yard is a firefight, and Dakota shows up and just blows a bunch of people away. We get a lot of explosions, a lot of people getting thrown around by said explosions. And this scene really is just to highlight the difference in Dakota over the last five years. He's a jaded veteran cop now, not doing things by the book. Um, as they're about to uh, wrap everything up, one of the terrorists takes a hostage and makes a Malibu Stacy reference, meaning even in this universe, the Simpsons are still on the air. And finally, we don't have to struggle to get a <laughs> Simpsons reference into yeah. the podcast. It, the movie does it for us. Yeah, he says, uh, nobody move or Malibu Stacy here gets it. Um, so that's great. We know I- in... What, what wonder, year do you think this movie... What year is this taking place? Is it 2015, you think? I don't know. <laughs> but I, I'm wondering if that episode with Lisa versus Malibu Stacy had come out at that point. Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe what's-his-name had seen the episode. Uh, Evan Laurie had seen it. He's like, oh, I gotta write that in there. Yeah. It's a great I mean, episode. <laughs> the, uh, I looked up the episode coming out, came out in 1994, so it's very possible. Yeah, maybe it go. was a rerun, and he just he happened to watch it. <laughs> uh yeah um dakota somehow knows the hostage is actually a terrorist and he shoots her in order to foil the hostage situation um he knows by the fact that she has a tattoo on her chest but there is no way of him knowing that based on the situation um so that is a uh, a lucky thing that he was right on um yeah and we have a scene at calcourt prison Manny, the other tech, shows up late and gives some lip to his boss. Dakota shows up and talks to his partner. 
And Slash shows up in hologram form wearing the same jumpsuit Arnold wore in The Running Man. And his computer evaluation basically says that he hasn't been reformed and the council decides to put him back into containment. But the system fails due to a quote-unquote power surge. And Slash is able to have some sense of autonomy and power. And he gets electrical powers and knocks Dakota's partner on her ass as she tries to subdue him. <laughs> then knocks out a few other cops and Dakota and Carradine shoot up the place. But they all go through Slash. Can I just uh, say one thing at this so. point in the movie? Uh, what is the point of having a hologram prison? I don't know. There is really no prose to it, is there? Because no. the, the person is still, his physical body is still there. He's in a prison, essentially. So having him in hologram form is just probably using up a ton of data, first of all, at this point. And it really serves no purpose, right? I I wonder if they're serving time in a cyberspace sort of world as they their bodies are in stasis so that they're not really a threat to escape i guess because they're just code yeah or but, but they're or, just not they're just not asleep so they're actually having to spend their time basically or well, how could their consciousness be awake i guess right you're, you're just code at that point you're not you're not aware of your surroundings you can't be i mean i guess it, i mean it is science fiction so it's like you know i uploaded your consciousness to this computer you know that's basically it so they did it because they said they they were able to do it because they said that they were able to do it so what's that uh what's that bruce willis movie uh when everyone is kind of like plugged into the computer and they're living their lives it's almost like the matrix yeah it's like the matrix or was it replicants was that it? some that sounds about right yeah but Uh, i think the matrix would be a better uh a, a better what's the word i'm looking for uh comparison yes reference. thank you reference comparison definitely it's but it just seems weird because you, there's really no reason to do it other than i guess it sounds cool yeah that's basically what it is it sounds right. cool and plus we yeah. can't put anyone on ice because again that already happened in demolition man <laughs> yeah, i think you also have to give a, a reference to the time and place this movie was made in 1995 where it was like cyberspace was all the rage it was like oh what could we do with that and it was kind of a new technology that people really didn't understand let alone people in hollywood so they're all just like oh well what if you know the you know the net came out re- not long or out or just around the there and, uh, <laughs> hackers the world wide web i thought about the net starring sandra bullock you idiots yeah. oh okay <laughs> no, no no i knew i got the reference no you I... didn't <laughs> don't lie don't hang me out to dry there mark <laughs> Where she orders a pizza for like 35 bucks over the over the net, something like that. Such yeah. Um, so I think that's sort of what it is. It's just like people kind of spitballing. It's like, oh, what could you do? It's like, oh, prison all on cyberspace. And then that's how Hologram Man is created. Sounds like you had something you wanted to say, Mark. Yeah, I was going to say, or the whole cyber thing, which they didn't explain well, um, putting them in cyberspace and all that. Um, probably more had to do with the re- rehabilitation part of it, but they just don't go into it. Mm. Like putting them in there is like reprogramming their mind, you know, sort of thing. Um, but they kind of lightly touch on that, but don't really. And it just leaves this whole thing where we can speculate and go, oh, it's just because it sounds cool. Um, <laughs> you know, and maybe that's as deep as he went with it. But um, I'm assuming that might have been like an original thought in there was like, no, they put them in there and they sort of like reprogram them. Yeah. You know, in a cyberspace sense. Uh, that's why that guy comes out and goes, I love our city. I, I will <laughs> right. serve whatever the city needs. You know. Sure. Uh, so they shoot up the place and all the bullets go through Slash and then Slash escapes through a wall. Um, afterwards, uh, Dakota gets called into a city council meeting where uh, the city is now run by CalCorp. The uh, council basically has like four members, including the president of CalCorp, the chief of police, and the secretary of something, um, economy or something like that. Um, secretary is not exactly on the side of the CalCorp's police state that they've created, but um, the city council knows that Manny the tech was the inside man of the uh, the escape. They tell Dakota to find Slash, and they put the city on their martial law until further notice, until he does. So they then go to Slash's hideout, and Slash shows up as his hologram form. Meanwhile, Dakota starts running simulations in VR um, to test his ability to shoot bad guys, which he does successfully. Um, 
But Manny designs a designs a program that'll uh, give uh, the hologram version of Slash a more lifelike appearance, which is basically just the Terminator 2 Bio Flesh Regenerator playset um, brought to life. You guys, <laughs> you guys remember that? <laughs> I do that remember toy? that. Oh, yeah. I had that. You had it? I did have that. Yeah, it was just essentially it was the plastic um, exo the, the skeleton, right. and then you just you put him in a little chamber. And he came back with the the flesh on him, but it was it was really terrible. I think I only used it once, and it I had no use for it other than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah all, all those projects like that was like one time. Oh, it's pretty cool, and then you never did it again. Yep. Like yeah, creepy, it, it yeah. crawlers. What else? Yeah, creepy crawlers. That was exactly what I was thinking of. I did it maybe once or twice, and I was like, yeah, this is too much work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it loses its luster after the first couple of uses. Yeah, it doesn't right. look as good as it does on TV. Sure. Right. Uh, I, the, the only thing that's pretty crazy is seeing all the people that have repurposed um, the Easy Bake Ovens to actually make real food. <laughs> that's funny. You know, it, it takes, like, a lot longer, obviously, because you're just lighting it with a light bulb or whatever is the yeah. trick to it. But it was like, yeah, it was like, how to make this in an Easy Bake Oven? And it's like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, the stuff that they use in this movie as quote-unquote flesh is really just paint, I guess. It looks like paint. They say well, it's polymer. Yeah, oh, there's okay. yeah, there's two of them. Um, yeah. which just makes the one seem not as impressive when it's explained later in the movie. Uh, yeah. how they do the other one. So, uh, so I, the, the science of this movie boggles my mind. I don't know how <laughs> a, a essentially a, a strand of code can dip into polymer and become flesh. Well, it's negatively charged polymer. You see? You, did, you skipped over that very important oh, part. God yeah. damn it. You're right. <laughs> now I, it all makes perfect sense. I recant my entire rant. It's It makes sense now. Yeah. And, and speaking of all the science stuff, if there was one person in this movie that I wanted to die, it was the turncoat scientist. Oh, he's so like, annoying. Like, that, that guy deserves to die. Man, <laughs> like, you're talking about? Manny. Played by yes. William, William Sanderson, Sanderson from uh, Deadwood. He had a long role in Deadwood. Uh, Does he die in Deadwood? I don't know. Uh, Can't remember. He he definitely deserved to die. Yeah, like obviously the villain, you know, which um, may be different than with the movie, or maybe everyone was supposed to be a villain. I don't get this part of the movie, <laughs> but um, obviously they should die. But this guy, I was like, I just want to see him just eat it, like. <laughs> I, I also love how when they call this big meeting of like the, the president and the mayor and all that, none of them seem very uh, concerned with what just happened. Yeah. One of them even asks, how dangerous is this Gallagher anyway? What does it matter? He's, he just turned into a hologram and escaped. He's, he can go <laughs> anywhere. He could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> Which and is I awesome. Like... He, he could be anything and he chooses to be himself still. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. When when they introduce the polymer, he says, "Oh, I could be anything," and he sticks with his same body. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be it, so, it would it would be so easy to hide. <laughs> no. Right. It, right. He could have yeah. been an Asian guy. He could have been a woman, and no one would have known. But no, he same terrible hair and everything. <laughs> yeah. So there's two points with all this. Is one, I love how they're having this secret council meeting in an open public <laughs> form. Yep. Um, <laughs> And two, um, they only say that line like all these movies that aren't really great, um, greatly written or well written, I should say, um, is that they only say that to foreshadow something later. You know, it's not that, oh, we could have just made this a plot point in a movie that he was doing it a lot. They only did it twice. You know, like it, it was one of those like, oh, yeah, he could, you know, popping up and going around and all these different people are committing all these terrorist acts and what's going on. But no, he just, and, and also I would love to know how they got the hair. With the polymers, <laughs> but <laughs> right. <laughs> you, yeah. You're, you're, you're cracking too many holes in this movie. <laughs> Truth needs to be out there. I got to do a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Everything wrong with hologram. <laughs> uh, so basically it is slash goes in as a hologram and comes out looking like his old self He's basically made of rubber and can be made. It can be anybody who he wants to be at any time. So Dakota goes home and he gets ready to, to find Slash. He takes out John Amos's laser gun and he's gonna use it. And meanwhile, yeah. Secretary Culkin is being escorted by the police. Go ahead, Mark. 
I was going to say, but by pulling out that gun, it means his girlfriend doesn't know him anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You've gone uh, off the deep end. <laughs> gone too far. Right. That's Maybe the only I thing have. this movie missed, right? Turn in your badge and your gun. You're off the yeah, case. That would have been great. You've gone too far, Dakota. You ever lose cannon out there, Dakota? <laughs> I got the mayor on my ass telling you doing $20 million worth of damage out there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. It would have fit in perfectly. Turn in your badge and your gun and suspended. Your chance suspend me, man. I've come too far. And he saw <laughs> I quit. When he's on suspension. <laughs> I'm going to be your, your ass, Captain. <laughs> I'm out there every day. You don't know what it's like. <laughs> Must be fun sitting behind that big desk of yours. Well, needs pl- plenty of bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the... Ah, oh, damn it. I had it, and I totally forgot. The McBain reference. <laughs> he, you're off the case, uh, McBain, and he throws the captain off the out of the window. That makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> he blows the captain away with his laser gun. <laughs> oh. All right, so uh, Secretary Culkin is being escorted by the police. And then Slash's goons somehow get a hold of a police helicopter and start blowing up all the cruisers. Then a gunfight ensues, and the goons manage to kidnap the secretary, and they bring him back to Slash's hideout. I, I don't mean to cut in, but I want to make this point. I love how this cop that's protecting the secretary uh, went to the Plaxico Burris school of how to keep your gun in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy's about ready to shoot his own dick off. <laughs> These cops are very unaware of what's going on because the the mayor asks is that ours and he just the, yeah. to the helicopter and the cop goes uh yeah i think yeah <laughs> either yeah. it is or it isn't man <laughs> i wonder who that guy was you know it's like <laughs> he's like the like, grip or something yeah hey it, like a tr- one of the truck drivers just backed up like delivered some shit it was like hey you kind of look like a cop Wanna be a movie? <laughs> it, and also be this is like the worst place to be a cop in this movie, I tried to keep a count. I think I lost track after like 30. So many cops die in this movie. And it's like it, it's like candy with this with this movie. There's like, oh, cop dead. Here's another cop yep. dead. Back up, dead. It's like, <laughs> this is worse than Gotham City. <laughs> yeah, it's L.A. after like crazy shit has happened, right? I guess, but... <laughs> it's, LA, it's L.A. with martial law, so much worse and no one ever talks about it like no one ever says we lost 10 good men out there it's just like no they everyone died and they're an afterthought well nobody yeah. get nobody cares because the president uh president jameson is just looking for more power chief of police is wrangling himself three ways yeah oh yeah <laughs> well if you're not doing that you're really not a, using yeah. your power correctly what's the point of being opposite. chief of police is you're not going to bang hookers two at a time well that's something we never see in movies it's very refreshing <laughs> the Most true of the time, reason to become snitches or whatever the true reason to become chief of police fuck <laughs> hookers on the reg <laughs> yeah why not um so slash needs the secretary and he wants him to help him to uh, bring about his plan and the secretary says that he needs time to plan so slash locks him away somewhere that man he tells slash that they are broke and so they decide to drive into a bank and demand they open the vault the manager refuses, so they kill him, and another guy gladly opens the vault for them. Uh, Instead of, you know, being able to just walk through walls, as he's done previously, <laughs> that's he, true. Goes, right? he goes in, in his polymer flesh, his negative, negatively charged polymer flesh, <laughs> for no reason. Just, this would have been so much cooler if he just walks into the vault, and, you know, like, the cops are trying to stop him, and he's, you know, laughing in steroids and... Just wanders La- right laughing into the vault. In steroids? <laughs> laughing in steroids, yes. <laughs> yeah, that steroid laugh, I don't is, know what is, it is. is. Is that like the gasping in Spanish subtitle? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, it would have been so cool if he did that, right? Like He's by the <laughs> vault door and just laughing hysterically, and the cops are bewildered, and he just yeah. wanders in and comes out with a couple of money bags with the, the, the money sign on it. <laughs> Well, they, they explained that cool moment away early when they say that they had to make the body so that he could interact with physical objects. Right. Yeah. You know? But he's able to punch the female cop. Yeah. And he punches right? a few people. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, he beats the but shit out of some people. They knew that scene was coming and was like, how can we have it till he doesn't just walk into the vault and take it? Oh, yeah. Let's have a line where it's like he needs to skin the whole thing. People will dismiss it. Will, will, will give us the benefit of the doubt there. 
and and somehow just because he's in code form he's stronger does that make sense to you i mean well, sure he is electrically charged too when he's a hologram though he's yeah, got those electric say. powers yeah and they make the explanation later that um he was there was more time given to make him stronger yeah than, God than what a little more later. time on him yeah. right yeah <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it sounds like she just brought that up so Dakota could feel bad about himself. <laughs> oh, just before before you go into this life or death fight with Slash Gallagher, just so you know, he's like 30 times stronger than you and you don't stand a chance. Bye. And he Bye. may or may not have a bigger dick. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've seen the polymer like uh, mold that they made and his dick is huge. <laughs> they needed an extra bucket just for his dick <laughs> all the polymer is just out they're running out in the city just because it's like a, you gotta give me like a, tw- a 13 inch penis <laughs> he would Soft. definitely be the guy to do that <laughs> but he's just so out out of control crazy where it's just his one demand would just be i want a huge polymer dick <laughs> positively charged do you think uh i i guess because we find out later that you could totally fuck as a hologram yeah. inside polymer so i guess i guess it's pleasurable for you right it must be right so the 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 the, the dick is is like a dick not just like uh, you're pegging somebody <laughs> right yeah it's not just for it's not just for for sure it's not a it's not a strap on right it's <laughs> and what it creates the red sparks and everything yep can, now that's going on down there. That, that that wouldn't scare you as a woman. Uh, yeah, right? I mean, or is it I just mean, that good? I guess vibrators vibrators are slightly are you know they run on batteries. So now I mean they're not supposed to spark. I mean you, you should <laughs> right. you should replace your vibrator if it sparks. Just so you know, for the PSA. ladies out there, <laughs> this is our second time we're bringing women's health into this uh, conversation. Uh, but women, if your vibrator is sparking, you need to replace it. So now can we? convert the strength level from when you're in hologram form to your your fucking level like do you become just like a stallion now that you're a hologram or can you like break someone's pelvis now i would think right right what's the point of being a hologram (laughs) exactly (laughs) do you enter superman levels of just like you really need to pull back a little bit on the yeah i would think that you're your cum is also like electrically charged, so it's probably going to kill any egg though too. So you can't get anyone pregnant. Now that that's a great question. Do you have bodily fluids at this point? Right. Yeah. I don't know. You should. Are they eat. also holograms? Is your sperm is is your sperm holograms? It, I don't mm. think so. Or do you just mm. shoot ones and zeros? <laughs> just code <laughs> lines of code. <laughs> yeah, that's. We we ask the tough questions here, and they call this yeah. a movie. Yeah. That's why people. That's why people tune in. Well, yeah. listen, if you're if you're gonna bring up this science, we have to bring up our own science, True. right? Yeah. If, if if it works within the realm of the movie, anything's yeah. game. Yeah, because yeah. there's probably hologram porn in uh, in this time, right? Yeah. Like oh, holograms yeah. fucking, and yeah. like a cum shot is just like ones and zeros across her face, like the Matrix <laughs> background. Right. Yeah. Just it's all green and <laughs> green, green ones and zeros. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Why not? Yeah, from, from the guys, from the guys that brought you Eiffel Towering with your past self, or whatever from Time Cop comes. <laughs> do do holograms come? And <laughs> sex in space. Sex in space. Sex we did. I won't. Uh, I I am afraid that we might <laughs> we might get too sidetracked with sex <laughs> on these podcasts. But I, listen, this one brings it up though. Come on. It, it, that's what I'm I'm saying as well. It, this sometimes, movie was just as curious about hologram fucking as we are yes so sometimes the most obvious joke needs to be said you know yeah. what i'm saying it Absolutely. needs to be brought up i so mean they we'll, didn't have to have the second they didn't have to have him fucking his girlfriend after he was a hologram they exactly. did this to us right you know, yeah they, they brought it it's up society's fault <laughs> it's <society's> fault <laughs> and we will not we will not apologize for that no nope. um okay so after they uh, they rob the bank, uh, Dakota gets a call from President Jameson, telling him the bank is uh, is get, he tells him to get down to the bank. Slash is there. They're taking the money. It's the it's CalCorp's money, and uh, he needs to kill Slash. So Dakota shows up, and the men in charge decide it's an all-out assault situation in order to get Slash. Hostages be damned. 
then Slash addresses the people of L.A. and tells him tells them that he is trying to free them of Cal Corp and their tyranny. So here I'm sort of thinking, Slash, Slash did nothing is, wrong. Slash is right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag uh, Slash. Yeah. Uh, so Slash walks out of the of the bank planting charges, has some words with Dakota, and then the rest of the goons come out with hostages, and one of the cops shoots a hostage square in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said that there was really no fucks given at this point. Yeah. So then Slash sets off the charges and the bank explodes, which some amazing dummy work here oh, yeah. <laughs> as Slash gets engulfed in the flames and it uh, melts his polymer body. And everyone shoots at each other and the cops can't hit a damn thing. And Slash's outer shell melts and he walks away as a hologram as the rest of his team gets away with the money. So there's a debriefing meeting happening with the president and Slash. Uh, he mentions that Slash gets away with $100 million of CalCorp's money. And the president is not happy. He tells Slash that he needs to, he needs to get, he, he tells Dakota that he needs to get Slash soon. Back at Slash's hideout, the secretary begrudgingly decides to help Slash in exchange for the ability to restructure social programs for the city once CalCorp is overthrown. So again, Slash did nothing wrong. Um, yeah. They're basically just trying to, you know, reform social programs. They want more welfare, more health care. It sounds yeah. sounds great. Slash, Slash is a hero. He's I, Robin Hood. I, I love that. Um, I don't think we touched on this at the beginning, but I love that the uh, post-apocalyptic thing that occurs is such a 90s thing as well. It's because the ozone layer mm-hmm. disappeared, which yeah. is such a 90s trope that they had to build a dome to protect against the ozone layer going away. Sure. I mean, we we already dealt with that with the core, too. Right. I was yeah. just going to say that's <laughs> what that was two yeah. weeks ago, I think, the core. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the council members uh, gets called, gets plans to meet with Dakota at like a warehouse. Uh, but it's actually Slash wearing a mask on top of his mask. And you think that uh, this would be a plan to frame Dakota for, you know, killing somebody or taking a hostage. But it isn't. They take the council member hostage and he hits a security bot like a baseball and the cops show up. Uh, Dakota demands the city council member, the treasurer, to be released in a wheelchair. Slash rolls. To, uh, so Slash says, sure, why not? So he put rolls the the treasurer uh, who is in a wheelchair towards the cops. Um, and it's revealed that he has wired the treasurer with charges and it blows up. And Karen Carradine, uh, uh, Dakota's. Uh, partner gets the worst of it and a firefight ensues and Slash and his goons get away and Carradine dies which was the only thing that she was supposed to do in this movie. Then President Jameson drives Dakota home in his limo Uh, Dakota wants off the case Jameson tells him no Um, this is just the same back and forth that he had previously Yeah, Um, Yeah. it's it's the same conversation yeah it's just like Dakota's just like get somebody else he's like no (laughs) <laughs> do what I'm telling you to do. And if you don't, then you're going to be in early retirement, I think he says. But it's kind of weird that they don't kick him off the case because he hasn't done anything to really <laughs> promote a good sense of, like, yeah, he's got this under control. He's he's fucked up a couple times now. He's got his partner killed. Yeah. So I, maybe it would be a good idea to distance him from this a little bit. Yeah. They kind of have a hard-on for Dakota solving this case just because, oh, well, you guys kind of know each other. Like, we don't, like, has he been visiting Slash as a hologram, like, for these five years? It could be that since every other cop is dead, they have no choice. Yeah. Like, listen, now, we only have, like, five guys left. Yeah. I'm sorry. Now, if, to do it. if Slash and Dakota were brothers, that would make more sense. Almost like, well, I did, I've never seen this movie, but is it almost like a face-off type of situation, right, where they they have a history together? That's why they send Travolta in to get Cage. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but I'm assuming I. I'm pretty sure that's yeah, that's the long and short of it. Yeah. So that would make more sense, right? If they had the that epic uh, like rivalry going, where he always puts them away and he always gets out, mm-hmm. that would make more sense. But they've only known each other for a day. Yeah. And he killed his partner of a day. So <laughs> grudge, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, at Calcorp Prison, Dakota and his girlfriend find Slash's actual body in a drawer, and then Dakota basically shoots his face off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so corny. It's, like it's meant to be this like awesome scene where he's like getting revenge, and it's it really yeah. doesn't carry the weight that they wanted. 
So Slash and his goons arrive shortly after, and they start shooting up the place. They're killing a bunch of Cal Corp police. A bunch of shooting happens. Most of the time, you can't see who's shooting at who. Eventually, Slash finds his body at, and what coat Dakota did to him, and he yells out, Dakota! Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> He's not going to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> the, the goons take Dakota, his girlfriend, and her dad hostage. Um, her dad is kind of like the scientist behind all this. So they go to shoot uh, her dad, and Dakota reacts super slowly and can't save the girlfriend's dad in time. He just gets blown away by a machine gun. Um, Dakota and Slash fight, and Slash beats the absolute shit out of Dakota. <laughs> it's a great scene. <laughs> it's so good, because he doesn't stand a chance, and he's just no. getting thrown all over the place <laughs> yeah eventually it ends with him tossing him like 50 feet in the air landing on a desk and then shoots him in the chest leaving him for dead um slash plants some more charges as pr- at the prison and leaves dakota and his girlfriend behind um then can, can we slightly talk how these uh bombs just look like kitchen timers yeah and not, they're like yeah <laughs> not really bombs they look like bluetooth shower speakers yeah um <laughs> So Dakota's girlfriend comes to Dakota's aid as he slowly starts to die. He's telling her to get out, but she decides to put him in the hologram machine as he's dying. And Slash blows up the prison while they're still inside, but Natalie survives the explosion through blind luck. And, <laughs> yeah. she, and she finds Dakota, who is now a hologram too. At Slash's hideout, goons are having a party. Slash is very emo because he finally killed Dakota. Now I guess he's having an existential crisis without his best adversary. Is is this what would happen if Joker actually killed Batman? That that is actually what <laughs> happened in one uh one story when he thinks he killed Batman and he goes he gets like super depressed. So this is essentially what happens, right? It's yeah. It's Joker killing Batman or thinking he killed Batman. And now he has no no more reason to live. He's done. Um, at Dakota's house, he's testing his hologramness against a computer and he's making it all staticky. But luckily, Natalie has negatively charged stage makeup that she's basically That's going to make a skin with, like the bad guys did with Slash. And, like, she just has this lying around somewhere. <laughs> My favorite part is that the the scientist goes through this whole thing of how it's this genius idea he came up with, and it's this rubber material, and it mm-hmm. just blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, I just got some negative charged stage makeup. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah, she's got, like, a bucket, okay, a yeah. bucket of it. And this guy's got, like, this whole, like, press. It's like he's making <laughs> records on the side. Right. She's like, oh, I'm just going to kind of slather you in this makeup. That must have been kind of awkward, right? Like, well, how did they apply it? Did she just dump it on him or? Probably rubbed it all over. Right. Probably gave him, like, a 13-inch dick, too. It was like, yeah, yeah. We're going to improve some things here. She just, just spent way too much time on the dick. It was like, all right, well, I think I think I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, I don't know if you guys knew it's a deleted scene. It was like the scene from Ghost when she was making his dick. <laughs> yeah, just like it just put two-handed. Just <laughs> at, at, at one point, at one point, it's the only thing that's really polymer is just his dick. <laughs> like, all right, we've been here for a couple hours now. It's like, I think it's done. <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 no. I think you could use an inch, another inch at least. You gotta make it wider. We have to make it wider. <laughs> like, what do you what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I know I said it was a good size, but I mean now now it could be a great size. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we have the technology. Slash has given us this opportunity. It'd be foolish not to take it. <laughs> um so she apparently she just has this uh, at Slash's hideout. Uh, they go to take out the police chief next using cyberspace. Uh, the, cyber, the police chief was just about to have himself a three way when he gets a call when he answers at his own home and it's the secretary. But then Slash reaches through the computer screen and basically strangles him to death with an electric grip. Um, so then Natalie finishes with the coat of skin and then he makes her feel bad for saving his life. Um, and then they fuck, and it shorts out all the electrical equipment. So then back at the hideout, Secretary Culkin comes to Slash with a social reform plan, and Slash freaks out because he's the one that makes the plans, so he kills Culkin. What was the point of him uh, even <laughs> kidnapping him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess just to get just to him kill, back. Uh, just to kill that the police chief, I guess. That was a Roid moment. Yeah, right. probably that was the guy. The <laughs> oh my God, there's live bullets in that in that machine. Gun. <laughs> live rounds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love oops. the Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there's a couple pointless things in this. Like, it's basically the henchman 
are pointless. Because right? yeah. you'll notice how we have not yet mentioned Tiny Lister doing anything. Yep. It's because he hasn't done anything. He's literally yep. just stood around, and I think he threatens the one guy, the, the one henchman, once. Yeah. And I think that's it. More or less, yeah. Um, so Slash kills Culkin. Then President Jameson calls Dakota, demands to meet. So they have a meeting, and Jameson says he has absolute power now. And uh, Dakota talks back to him, and Jameson threatens to kill him. But then Dakota reveals that he's a hologram, and he says he's gonna, they're gonna do things his way, and he's gonna get Slash once and for all. Um, so Natalie shows up to tell Dakota that Slash is more powerful than him, and Dakota knows that he's the only one that could stop Slash. So One Eye goes to Jameson's house and just walks straight through the front door, takes him hostage, and brings him to Slash um, at his hideout. And the cops show up, and we get more gunfights that are way too dark to discern what's going on. Jameson breaks free of his restraints and kills Manny with a live wire. And then surprise, it's Dakota who's wearing a mask on top of his mask of Jameson. He takes one eye and shoves him into the regenerator chamber and suffocates him with a rubber mask. Um, and then Slash shows up and slaps him around 50 yards across the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly because um, uh, Dakota calls him Norman, so he gets really upset about that. Then Dakota slaps Slash across the room, and then one of Slash's goons shows up with a flamethrower and sets Dakota on fire with some excellent dummy work once again. <laughs> they had and to do it twice. I'm yeah, it's great. that's great. And why, if you got you got uh, works and pi- special effects that great, you do it twice. Um, yeah. Dakota reveals himself to be a hologram and then sets the flamethrower guy on fire somehow. Uh, so Slash removes his his uh, outer shell. So he's just a hologram, and they are two holograms for one final showdown. Meanwhile, Tiny Lister goes out like a bitch. Yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. He gets taken out by a nondescript guard. Just a faceless guard. And I was thinking the entire movie with that tattoo or whatever on the top of his head, I'm like, they're going to shoot something through that. Yeah. It's a bullseye, essentially. Yeah, it's like it it paid no usage throughout the whole movie. They don't make any reference to it. It's just set up for a cool gunshot and then they end up doing it by a non-discreet guard i thought it was going to be dakota shooting him you know like how he did that 12 person 12 shot thing yeah you know i thought that's how they were going to do it but yeah yeah, that's another scene that has no point to this movie the whole virtual training Um, yeah yeah so uh slash and dakota they continue to fight and then dakota uses the computers to get more power and shoots electricity into slash and then shoots him into a containment tube and manages to get him back into containment. Then he, <laughs> he I was sorry to interrupt. He says uh, Slash is kicking Dakota's ass again, and I guess Slash has him on the ropes and mm-hmm. he's taunting him. And Dakota has his first of it might not be his first, but he has one of his like worst comebacks ever when he yeah. says, "You forgot something, Slash. What's that? I'm smarter than you. You've done nothing to prove that throughout this entire <laughs> movie. First of all." <laughs> Get off your high horse, Dakota. Yeah, they're two meatheads, too. It's not like... <laughs> right. No, Dakota hasn't solved any complex problems or deduced anything from yeah. what Slash is doing. He's just been, you know, going guns blazing in every situation he's been in. Yeah. It's never been, oh, I need to outsmart the bad guys here. Like, no, you dumbass. You you literally just run headfirst into every situation just shooting. So yeah. you, you haven't earned that catchphrase <laughs> the only time he ever like quote unquote solves anything was at the boatyard when he realized that the woman was part of the gang but like it's blind luck that it was right because he doesn't yeah. know that he doesn't really he's never there's no reason why he would have seen that tattoo he's like check no. under open her jacket see like oh look the same tattoo it's like wow that was lucky <laughs> that was lucky yeah hell yeah it was he was hoping <laughs> like, they the don't Hail Mary. They don't show, they, they cut away before he, like, wipes his brow, like, oh, whew. yeah. God's looking out for me on that one. He points <laughs> to the sky. <laughs> and that's probably not the first time that's happened to yeah, him. Sure. He just shoots a, he shoots a civilian. It turns out to be an actual civilian. <laughs> I mean, but he's a loose cannon, man. Right. Um, I mean, you do it every civilian, you're going to get lucky once in a while, I'd imagine. Yeah. I think, like, there's, like, a one in 15 chance. So oh, for every every 14 civilians you shoot one time, you're going to be right. right. Like, oh, damn. This was the one. 
Uh, so uh, Dakota uses the computers to get him and shoots electricity into the slash and shoots him into the containment tubes and manages to get him back into containment. Then he short circuits the containment computer and blows it up, killing Slash. And Slash is dead. Yeah, it's kind of really, uh, really lame ending for Slash. And it was just trying to bring Lele back from authoritarianism. Mm-mm-mm. So essentially, Bane from The Dark Knight Rises is Slash. Yeah. Basically, they have very similar uh, plans. They even all both they both uh, rob a bank or they stock they market. Rob the stock market, but yeah. Similar, very similar. Very similar. So we're saying that Christopher Nolan ripped this movie off. Yeah, 100. percent Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> In your face, Christopher Nolan. Yep. Got him. <laughs> Take that. We know you've seen Paprika based on Inception. <laughs> Man, today we're, it's all the hot takes coming at you. <laughs> um, so then Jameson arrives after they've killed Slash, and Jameson uh, says he's not lifting the martial law order. He's gonna, he has absolute power and he can make Dakota a very rich man if he wants to be his right hand man. So Dakota uses his powers, his hologram powers, to sticks his hand into the the limo window and blows up the limo somehow. Well, yeah, just, we're just yeah. Going it's like see. it's like the people that made rubber. This is what they were talking about. Yeah, like just how? Why, why? Why did this blow? No reason. No yeah, reason. No reason. <laughs> Good callback. I like that one. Yeah. Um. So Dakota just wantonly uh, murders somebody in front of everybody, and yeah. Natalie walks up to Dakota and asks him a very profound question: What are we gonna do yes. now? And the answer is, <laughs> Dakota might as well look at the camera. He just says, vote. vote and walks away. And that is our end credits. And that is the that is better than, like, I was hoping for a freeze frame, but vote was even better. I, uh, yeah, I was really hoping, like, when it ended, I said out loud, that's it? That's how they're going to end this? That's not how you end a movie. That's yeah, how think- you end a commercial. Yeah, I think Evan Lurie was working out some uh, hatred towards the government at that moment. <laughs> Rock the vote, guys. Let's yeah. do this. And and that's Hologram Man. It was awesome. It's great. It's so much it fun. Was. For all of its shortcomings, it really makes up for it in just overall ridiculousness and over-the-top cheesiness. Uh, the the characters are just so silly. <laughs> they're, I don't know what they're trying to be really in this movie but it's they they always come off as comical like they're they're, you could tell they they're definitely like c-list action stars Mm -hmm. uh they're not they they try to act tough and they're not really that tough (laughs) they they get their asses kicked constantly (laughs) yeah And, and the whole time the movie doesn't seem to know how to make a hero and a villain um because it's like oh dakota's the hero Okay, well, he's kind of boring and is sort of a bootlicker for most of the movie. Um, And then Slash is doing all the cool, like, throwing down the government stuff. Um, But then at the end, it's like, oh, we got to show that he's the same as the uh, chairman. So uh, he wants to turn into the chairman and take over. That's how we'll do it. Yeah. You know, sort of thing. It's just they they went into this notion. Everybody's like, oh, they're going to think Slash Gallagher is evil. And that's why that's why they'll they'll you know, root for Dakota when it, it obviously, I, maybe it's looking through a 2019 lens, you mm-hmm. know, where it's uh, uh slash has the better um, politics for lack of a better word. Yeah. In this. No, I was totally on Slash's side throughout all of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Is there anything you guys would do to make this movie better? Oh man. I, I think I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a backstory between slash and dakota yeah uh i think that would have played a good role in showing how their grudge has maybe been for years or or even months at that you know a, a grudge doesn't start in a day usually mm-hmm. uh that's just like you know a squabble um i also would have liked to have had more john amos not john amos um yeah john amos, amos. yeah oh. yeah yeah, I think John Amos would have been cool because he's he's like the only badass in this movie and he's only in it for a few minutes. Uh, it would have been cool. And if you were going to kill John Amos, have it be halfway through. Yeah. So we get that angst for for Dakota losing a real partner, not 
someone that we barely know later. Yeah. Like it's been years at that point when he loses his next partner. Sure. And no one cares. You don't care about her. She doesn't really do anything. At least no. John Amos, they show the firefight there. Yeah. So you, you sense a little bit of camaraderie. Uh, yeah, I, and I, to Mark's point as well, I think having a little bit more uh, Zeus in it, being a badass, you know, like he should have, it should have been a diehard situation where John McClane is fighting the the one German who he killed his brother, right? You have that stairwell fight scene before yeah. Yeah. he gets to, to Hans. So why not have Dakota lock up with 8-Ball? It'll be like the, it'll be the sub boss before getting sure. to Slash, right? That you could have done something. Like you have such an intimidating person in that in that character, 8-Ball, and you totally misuse him. And then obviously we needed to see Dakota being slathered in the goo and <laughs> and like how the girlfriend just kind of really spends too much time downstairs and like how that <laughs> works. And you gotta you, you get that in there because and that could have been where the the trailer scene was. So you spend three minutes of just her. You don't you don't have to show Dong. You just kind of like maybe the the cameras from the back and she's down there working it and and then you could show his face and he's just really uncomfortable. Like all right, it's I think we're done here. Like, <laughs> By, by the time we're done, 15 cops have been killed. So <laughs> that's kind of on your hands now. <laughs> all, all I needed from this movie is outside of the two things uh, Dan talked about, the non, um, not the stuff at the end. Um, you know, we need more John Amos and uh, Tiny Lister in this movie for sure. Um, but I, I would like to have taken those three to five minutes that, that we lost to the trailer and all at the beginning to at least give me even a montage of why the city was the way it was. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just a little, like, even in Demolition Man, not to keep making that comparison, but, um, you know, it shows what a train wreck the city was, you know, at the beginning of the movie, and then it gives you a little bit of an idea what the city's like when it gets, when it gets unfrozen. Like, literally, the only transition here is that the overhead shot of Los Angeles changes with just a very ridiculously... Uh, drawn in dome over top mm. of a of a section not anything like oh there was a thing and all these people died you know it was just like oh nope this dome came down and then we took over martial law you know yeah sort of thing um like at, a little bit of more world building even if it's like a two minute montage uh sure. may have may have maybe given dakota a little more than just going from rookie cop to now all of a sudden he's like this badass cop that the chairman wants to see permanently. Right. You know, like there's no no build up. Sure. Yeah, I think I think there is a lack of world building and it probably just chalk it up to the fact that this was a low budget movie. Like, you know, there's there's four four or five locations and it's probably a producer's ha a, pro a producer's house, somebody else's house and then warehouses. Um it seemed like one of like Slash's hideout could have been a a, a late night rave that Evan Lurie might bounce at <laughs> during during the weekends. Um, uh, so I think that's one of the reasons for the lack of world building. But yeah, it's like something like something. The Running Man was is a perfect example of a movie that was able to to world build and without having to do too much heavy lifting. Um, definitely agree with John Amos. Definitely he could have like he could have survived he could have survived the gunshot in the beginning. And then he could have been the one that died at the end instead of having two partners. Like yeah. you could maybe thought that he died and then we have the flash forward and then like, oh, he meets up with his partner. It's like, oh, look, he's, you know, he's he's still alive, but his he's still dealing with like some loss of nerve and like he has nerve damage in his in his arm or something like that. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely could have used more of that and a backstory between Dakota and and Slash. But otherwise, uh, you know, this movie stands on its own. It's so much. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, yeah, had a good time with it for sure. Uh, all right, I think I think that's gonna wrap this up. You guys want to plug your shit? Sure. Uh, Dequino one twenty two is my Twitter account, personal Twitter account. Uh, I also run our real play D and D podcast stranger damies and you can find us on twitter and instagram at stranger damies um come hang out with us chat if you like the show let us know we did get we do get some feedback every now and then and we definitely appreciate it and you like it that's awesome uh please leave reviews on itunes 
anywhere that you get your podcast uh, episodes, and we would greatly appreciate that. Yeah, sure. yes. So, and as mentioned, Stranger Damies, our D and D podcast airs every Wednesday. Um, new episode just went up yesterday, um, which is the end of uh, one of our first uh, quarantine sessions, maybe the second one. Um, so uh, be sure to check that out. Um, I will apologize way in advance that I think I may have misnumbered the episodes in my opening. I'm not sure, um, but uh, I will put a warning before the episodes that I do do that in. But um, yeah, so check that out. Uh, there's, like I said, every Wednesday. Um, and then we also have uh, our uh, video game podcast, uh, Game Vault podcast, um, that airs every other Monday. Um, I believe we'll be recording um, a show this Friday. Friday? Yes. 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 So um, it'll be a new show next week. Um, so be sure to check that out. And then we stream. Um, we definitely go at least, I know at least once a week. Um, I'm going to be doing Thursdays. So when this episode drops, you'll be able to go to um, the Game Vault podcast on Twitch um, and just watch that um, uh, there. Uh, but we're going to be trying to stream multiple days um, in a week. It just comes down to equipment and all that. We uh, kind of just jumped into this, you know, with quarantine stuff happening. And, um, you know, we're sort of trying to uh, pick up the pieces to sort of get this on a more steady pace. But uh, do, if you'd like to hear, um, you know, our opinions in the podcast, um, we spout more um, uh, on the streams there. And obviously, uh, the Twitters, um, Stranger Damies and Game Vault Pod. Um, you can send your same criticisms um, there. Um, mine is at Off the Mark Tweet, but I very little uh, do I mention any of the stuff that would be in the podcast and all that outside of retweets and stuff, just because if you do need to uh, ask any questions or do anything, it would probably be a lot easier to focus it in on the podcast's Twitter accounts. But if you like to follow dumb shit from um, somebody you hear on a podcast, feel free to follow me. I don't know if you'll get a lot of the reference. Okay. Yeah, and this is They Called This a Movie. You can find us at they called this a movie.podbean.com. We're on all podcast streaming apps at They Called This a Movie. Just search for They Called This a Movie. We'll pop right up. Also, uh, we are the main Damie.com. That's our main website. You can find us on all social media, just at the main Damie. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just look for the main Damie. We should be there. We're also a proud member of Geek Vibes Nation. They're gbnation.com. They got a great bunch of shows. Um, besides us, there's Scene and Nerd, Tia's, as Dan already mentioned, a bunch of other great shows. They're posting new podcasts just about every day. So, any podcast streaming app, just look for Geek Vibes Nation. You'll find us there as well as all the other ones. Um, GVNation.com is the main website there, but they're on all social media at Geek Vibes Nation. Um, and a bunch of great people with a whole bunch of stuff uh, for whatever your interests are. And I think that's going to wrap us up. Um, I am at Aunt Delvec on Twitter. You can find me there. The uh, best way to get us a hold of us is at the main Damy on Twitter. You can also hit us up at the main Damy at gmail.com. If you have questions, comments, you want to throw a movie our way to tell us to, to watch it. Um, a great place to do it. Um, if you can, please subscribe, rate us, give us a, give us five stars on iTunes. Give us a review. If you have that time, you, you know, you've got the time. So please help this out. Um, it really does. It helps us out a great deal. Even for a, a podcast this small it really does um, help us out tremendously. And that's going to wrap it up this week. Um, the movie has been Hologram Man from 1995, directed by Richard Pepin. So for Dan Aquino and Mark Myers, this is Anthony Lavecchio telling Richard Pepin to go fuck himself. <laughs>